No one was surprised that Nick Saban was able to package up the blueprint of bludgeoning people to death and work it to perfection in winning a national championship. No one was surprised by that, and no one in the offseason said, oh man, Alabama, dude, what they just did is going to revolutionize this sport, and we're going to have to get on board, and we're going to have to do what they did and change things, or we're going to get left in the dust. They just did what Alabama had done to that point. Well, 2019 LSU is a far cry from that. 2019 LSU has changed the sport quite literally for everyone in varying degrees. And I'm going to tell you how. I want you to think about this. Everyone now is going to believe that they are a transfer quarterback away from a championship, keeping in mind the whole time that Joe Burrow was actually on campus two years. He didn't just come in off the street and win a championship. But once they got the rest of their program in order, Joe Burrow was the guy, it turns out, the whole time that was capable of leading them to a national championship. And he's not homegrown. He didn't come from Bossier City. Uh, He didn't come from a parish down in Louisiana. They got him from Ohio State via the transfer route. So everyone now looks and says, we got to go find that quarterback like LSU did. If we can find that quarterback like LSU did, then here's step two. We got the quarterback already. Everyone now thinks they're just some NFL off-field analyst hire away from winning a national championship. Did you know Joe Brady? A lot of you NFL fans didn't even know who Joe Brady was. In fact, if you're not a New Orleans Saints fan or really hardcore dialed in to the pro game, you didn't know the name Joe Brady. And yet he comes in and becomes a rock star overnight in the world of college football. He wasn't a coordinator. He wasn't a head coach, which leads you to believe, possibly, that it's just that easy. Those guys are a dime a dozen in the NFL. They just grow on trees. So let's just go find our Joe Brady. I've heard people say that a dozen times already this offseason. We need to go find our Joe Brady. As if, again, they grow on trees. Everyone thinks they can go get him a Joe Brady now. So you got that. See how easy this sounds so far? Just go get a quarterback off the transfer market. Just go find Joe Brady. Just go find your next Joe Brady. Everyone also, uh, kind of packaging all this up, they think there's some magic button. This didn't take LSU four or five years. It was an overnight deal, which leads me to my fourth point. Everyone thinks their head coach is capable. And this premise is born from your default setting on Ed Orgeron. I've talked about this a million times. We talked about it on our old version of Late Kick when we were independent. And I'll talk about it until I'm blue in the face. People's default on Ed Orgeron was that he was a moron. They judge the book by its cover. Sometimes you can judge a book by its cover accurately. This one, turns out 99% of people were wrong. And so Ed Orgeron got judged... And he was kind of a caricature of everything you would expect from a guy from where he's from in Louisiana. And so my point is, the same people who used to paint this man, Ed Orgeron, as a fool, now look at him, and he's accomplished more than, in, in the span of like 12 months, he's accomplished more than anyone in the sport has, again, in that time frame. And they look at him and say, okay, good for Ed Orgeron. If he did it, then that certainly means our guy is capable of doing it. And if our guy can't do it, then certainly we can find someone out there to do it because... Again, let me repeat for those of you in the back, Ed Orgeron was able to do it. I don't think of Ed Orgeron this way anymore, but some people probably still do. So the bottom line here, and how this pertains to Georgia, Michigan, whoever, fill in the blank, the grace period has evaporated. That's what LSU did. They, in large parts, ruined the sport for a lot of other people. The grace period, you know what the grace period is. If you don't, here's what the grace period is. The grace period used to be yeah, we went 8-4 and four this year, but, I mean, we got a lot of solid foundation here to build on. That used to fly in 2004. Not that people weren't winning championships. Not that expectations weren't high in 2004. But keep in mind how the landscape was different back then. Well, nowadays, and it didn't start with LSU. It started with Nick Saban coming to Alabama in 2007. Saban comes to Alabama. Nick Saban starts dominating college football, and he sets a bar higher And he goes on to continue to set that bar higher for the foreseeable future than anyone had at least in a couple of generations, if not ever, in the history of the sport. So then, all of a sudden, chain reaction. What was once good enough is no longer good enough. Think Phil Fulmer at Tennessee. He's gone shortly thereafter. Think uh, Tommy Tuberville at Auburn. He's gone shortly thereafter. And Mark Richt, while he survived a whole lot longer after Saban was hired, what Richt was doing at Georgia that had previously been considered good enough, was no longer good enough. Their efforts didn't decline, guys. The results were largely the same. 
It's just that this guy, Nick Saban, comes to Alabama and all of a sudden he shows you what's possible and therefore your good enough is no longer enough. So then here was part B of the chain reaction. Saban comes in, standards go up, you're no longer good enough for us, we're going to go hire new staffs and we're going to pay them a lot more because that's the secret to success. If we just fill their pockets a lot more, if we tack on two and a half, three million dollars more per coaching staff per year, then that justifiably grants us the access and the reason to demand immediate results. Bearing in mind all the while, the actual formula for success never changed, but that's what people thought. We pay you more, therefore we can shave a year and a half off of what it should take for you to achieve top results. This is a microwave mentality. It's not based in reality. Well, now we fast forward all the way to 2019. 2019 comes, Ed Orgeron's offense for a decade plus had been mired in mediocrity, and that could be a kind description of what LSU was offensively. And then, just like that, a hire here, a personnel change there, they take the same group of kids, largely, that were shut out by Alabama in 2018, and they go in Tuscaloosa and hang half a hundred on them nearly, and they dominate the sport, and they go 15-0 undefeated, rewrite the record books in college football. And the reason that evaporates the grace period for everyone else is because you're no longer allowed to look at your boosters and look at your AD and look at your staff and say, well, we got a new quarterback, so it's going to take us a couple of years. Well, we're putting in a new offense, so it's going to take us a couple of years. New coordinator, so it's going to be a transition period. No, that doesn't work anymore. And the reason it doesn't work is because you see this guy, if you're watching the video for him, you see the guy at the bottom of the screen there, Ed Orgeron. Half the time, people aren't even convinced his headset is plugged in. And yet he pushed the buttons overnight to take the same group of kids who were giving you the results we're getting right now. And then they just rewrote the record books. So why don't we just go find our Joe Brady? Why don't we just go find our Joe Burrow? The answers to those questions are, of course, because you just saw a generational confluence of events in Baton Rouge. But don't use the words generational or confluence to convince a Michigan fan or a Georgia fan or a South Carolina fan or whoever out there. We got a bunch of them who want their offense revolutionized overnight. Don't tell them it's not possible. They're not interested in hearing it. They think they recruit well enough. They think they can get whoever they want to. And they think that there is this plentiful supply of ingredients that LSU just packaged in a perfect combination. They can do it as well. I don't know that that's reality. In fact, I think I know it's not reality. Uh, the best evidence will be watch LSU this year. LSU is capable of winning another national championship, but the thing about it is LSU could fall well short of their offensive output last year and still be a contender this year. It's not easy, but the bad part for everyone else is Ed Orgeron made it look easy last year. So your grace period that used to exist, you used to be able to look at people in the eye and say, just give me a couple of years with this new coordinator. Yeah, this new quarterback, he needs 12 to 18 months to mature. Nope. You got spring, and now certain viruses come along and take that from you. Don't care. We're still paying you a lot. You still recruit at a high level. Give us results yesterday. Welcome to college football 2020 and beyond. Thank you, LSU. Moving on.